Hello and welcome back to the FPL show on the Gallagher Shots YouTube channel. I'm Matt. I'm Daniel. So, um, welcome back. This is the show where we try and have a nice, fun look at Fantasy Premier League because if we didn't, we'd probably weep uncontrollably. <laughs> <laughs> um, if, you, if you're tuning in this week to see how that, that guy who talks about fantasy football is doing now, whether his fortunes have turned around, I can com comfortably tell you that it hasn't. Um, so, yeah, that's, that's the way it is. For now, anyway... Um, before we get going, I just want to make sure that um, we get you to like the video if you're enjoying it. That's all right. Um, or, just, or just do it anyway. We we'll get you to like this video. We are going to get you. If you don't like it, we're going to come around and we're going to make you like it. Whether you like it or not, that's, that's sort of how it came across. And I've got a lot of time for it, Matt. Well, I mean, we've got to be quite forceful. Do it. Like it now. We're not, do we're not going to go anywhere. We're not going to start talking until you do it. We know if you've done it. Do it, do it, do it, do it. Waiting. Right, so you've liked it. We also now need you to subscribe to the channel as well because that's doing all right as well. Then okay. come back to the video. Then you can watch the video. Yeah, absolutely. So that would yeah, tick that off. And if you like what we're talking about or you want to get involved in a conversation, feel free to comment as well because um, I actually do quite enjoy having a little peek to see if anyone's commented um, and kind of have a bit of a chat with people that way. And I'm sure you do too, Daniel. I do. I do. Not too much in the last one, but yeah, it is always nice. And we've we'll we'll had some Twitter questions this week. I'm using the plural of questions, wild and loose. I think we'll have a question. We do have a question. It's a good question, though. A question. Question. It it's a got... doozy. It's a doozy. <laughs> so, um, yeah, the main reason to subscribe, guys, is because there's a whole host of fantastic content on the channel, such as the Always Smiling Faces podcast. You've got the match previews that come every week. There's one that's just been recorded uh, for the Palace game uh, tonight. So make sure you give that a watch as well. We've got match reactions, which are all very positive at the minute because we are mint. And obviously we've got extra time too. So there's just, honestly, you could probably spend your whole week watching all these amazing videos and it'd be well worth it too. Shall we get started, Daniel? Let's do it. So um, we'll get started just by having a little bit of a mention about how absolutely dreadful the fantasy Premier League servers are and the fact that team leaks are slowly destroying the game that we know and love. Yeah. What do we reckon, mate? Because I feel like your deadline was a little bit different to mine this week. Yeah, so my deadline was atrocious. Obviously, if the deadline is a certain time, then you should have up until that time. But at the same time, you know, you don't want to be leaving it a minute or two beforehand because you can't let court with your pants down. And I think as adults, or to the children playing this, then um, we've got to kind of accept a little bit of personal responsibility and just be like, do it five minutes beforehand, or maybe 10. I think I tried to make a team change 17 minutes before the deadline, thinking, well, that's enough time. That is enough time. And it was down. And I had my moves locked in. I think we were waiting for team news. I was actually about to do it at like sort of say like 10 to the hour or when whenever it, like I had a bit of time. I cannot remember exactly what the, time, what the deadline time was this week. It was an hour and a half. half it was wasn't? half one. Yeah, it was half yeah, one. This yeah. Week. So it was 10 to one. I was thinking, oh, you know what? I'm, I'm going to a christening. I need to. I need to make my changes. And I mentioned in the group of you guys, and I'm in the Greyhead League, and I mentioned what my changes were going to be to the players in that in that uh, chat as well. And then I saw on Twitter, going to have team news at 10 past one, I thought that's 20 minutes. 20 minutes. More than enough time. So it went on. 17 minutes left. Wouldn't let me get in. So my moves were going to be Son, who was injured, obviously. Uh... And I had three Man City, so I was going to take Foden out. And I was going to put in Pascal Gross, and I was going to put in Kevin De Bruyne out. Oh, well. Um, I mean, it obviously, it didn't really work out well with those moves anyway, did it? You didn't really the, miss out. Well, I mean, Pascal Gross got nine or ten points. But did he? Did he? Yeah, well, Pascal he? Oh, Gross... Well, oh, yeah, of course, yeah. got a goal and two bonus. <laughs> okay, so yeah, that did <laughs> that, that, that didn't um, work out bad. But then also, in that Kevin De Bruyne got an assist and he got 
Did he get two? An, ass an, ass an assist. An assist. Um, and he got a couple of bonus points as well. But more importantly, I now don't have these players playing against the Brummy Mackhams and Brentford, respectively. So they are two brilliant fixtures. And I now don't have those players and I've missed out on a net positive from the hit I would have taken, like a good yeah. one. So I think, I think for me... It, I had it, a pint of Guinness in my hand when all this was happening and I was able to not watch the football and I just got sloshed and it, was, it made it more bearable. Nice. That is one way to, one way to deal with heartbreak, I suppose. It um, is. For me, it, it's not so much the game that's the problem, I don't think. The website, it, it's been bad for years. Like, it's not changed. There's always been a little bit of trouble. For me, it's the, the team news. So there's a popular Instagram account that um, the posts uh, leaked team news and has a channel kind of devoted to doing that. Obviously, everyone waits around for that. And as soon as that comes out, everyone then piles into the FPL site. And that's when it just it falls apart completely. And if you didn't have that team leak, that that doesn't happen. Yeah, it, do, it just doesn't. So the the website or the, the makers of the game either need to push that deadline way ahead. So team news doesn't matter which is what they've tried to do previously, which is why it's now 90 minutes instead of 60. Or they need to bring it forward so it's, I'm sorry, bring it back so it's at that first kickoff. So you get that first team sheet and you can react accordingly and it doesn't matter and you have that hour for the servers to just take a hit because obviously everyone piling in with that hour is going to cause issues, but it's not going to be as bad as everyone trying to pile in with 20 minutes after hearing two of one of the two of the most popular players in the game aren't on playing which is essentially what's happened twice and it's going to happen again this week yeah because man, man city are the first fixture again um so they are in a massive pickle they're in the that they've got loads to kind of think about because they can't all of a sudden change their website and improve their website right in the middle of the season i mean they could do it with the world cup coming up but you're, you're going to upset a lot of people with either either way you move that deadline. Until those team team leaks go away, there's always going to be an issue. Now, for me, very quickly, I was out. I was out with my daughter. Um, I had a little, I had a few notifications pop up and I noticed that the, the team leak had happened. Um, so I quickly, I can't believe it happened because I was probably in the worst place to react to the news, like wandering around Metro Centre. And I tried to um, I tried to change my team and it just worked immediately. Now I took out Mitrovic for Wilson already, but then I reacted to the team news by taking out Foden for Jared Bowen. Now, if I hadn't have oh and, and as well the big kicker was that I moved the captaincy off Haaland and put it on Cancelo. And so, in terms of if I just ignored my phone not looked at any news, I would have got five points, well, 10 points off Haaland's captaincy. I wouldn't have captained Cancelo. And I, I would, I, I'd already sold Mitrovic anyway. That was a move that I did ages ago. So it's, it's just that Foden transfer, which now looking at it, I could have had Foden for this week coming. Um, Jared Bowen's still a good hold, but it just it's the fact that the, this team news is making a lot of people including myself make very reactionary moves that whereas you spend almost a week thinking about certain things i'm going i'm going to hold off i'm going to ignore price changes because you don't want to get burned by injuries and then all it takes is a little bit of team news to totally and utterly like throw everything up in the air um and obviously i i mean i i, I want to spend time with my daughter i don't want to have to like quickly react to team news on a game that doesn't ever actually matter like yeah. it's a bit of a it's a bit of a shame that that ha that happens um I, if if i think if the deadlines when it's just when the kickoff is you spend less time you spend less time because right game week 38 prime example last year i'm like right i've got it was saturday or whatever sunday i think it must be a sunday um we're all a lot of us got the day off work sat there and i'm like right 
looking for, like piling through 10 games worth of predicted lineups and i spent like hours <laughs> because i had i was like neck and neck for a mini league worth a fair bit of money and it was like right what decisions i want to make who am i doing this with who am i starting who which who's my transfer who's my punt this week because there's some uncertainty whereas if it was just something till kickoff and i had i would and then I didn't have to worry about it. I wouldn't have checked all day. I would have had a full Sunday, do whatever I wanted, with a few moves in mind. And then I come to it, I can just look at the actual teams and go, right, I'm going to make this, this decision instead of having a half guess. And I appreciate what they're trying to do in a sense that it's for people around the world so that there's not an advantage of knowing team news or not team news. But the way I look at it is a couple of years ago with Aaron, who I do my Champions League podcast with, when we worked together, we did like an American football draft, which I, pl I played once, I haven't played again, because I don't know enough about American football. But at no point did I whinge about the deadline of when I had to make a decision by, because it's an American sport in America, predominantly for Americans. And exactly. The yeah. internet graces me like the ability to play that game, which I'm very grateful for. And I should just take it that way. Like this is, this is obviously a game that is going to kick off in UK time, and that is the same, by the way, for Bundesliga games or when we play the Champions League game. There's a five forty-five kickoff somewhere in the group stages. A lot of the time, it might be in a Ukrainian country or somewhere where it's a lot colder and a couple hours ahead, perhaps. So we all understand, and we all go, well, yes, this makes sense. And no one kicks off. There's no, oh, what about this, that, or the other? Just yeah. do the same thing that nothing is ever going to be perfect. You're never going to please everyone. But do the thing that makes the most amount of sense. But again, the people that organise FPL do not care in any way, shape, or form about the quality of the game or player enjoyment. They care about ads. 100%. And it's, it's a what? fact that not one person has like tweeted or like addressed the fact that for two weeks now it's there's been an issue with the servers there's not been a single a single bit of communication players they've got revenue coming to the site that way through advertisements because it's not 10 million players it's probably about two if you look at eight million of those teams it's duplicate teams for like the the hit 56 lot you've got some zombie teams that people set up then you've got the random people from around the world that create a team to be top of the week, one week for clout. Yep. Or, or sometimes I think it's because they're going to win a prize, but when you use a chip, you can't win a prize for that week. You kind of get yeah. like nullified. But yeah, anyway, I think we'll talk about this for another 20 minutes. But that's we could, what yeah. People are careful. Anyway, we're bad them. for us. <laughs> yeah, yeah, look at them nerds arguing about a game that is free. How dare know. they? Um, I mean, ultimately, just to hit the nail on the head, you've got people in America waking up at five o'clock in the morning because there's a hint that there might be team news that will affect their fantasy football teams, which yeah. in itself is absolutely mental. Like getting up at that time and then not finding out. Like imagine if that was just a case of, oh, there's nothing. I'm awake now. And that's the thing. You know, if you are around the world, setting a lot, if, if you're that desperate, setting along for the time that the team sheets come out maybe 10 minutes after you yeah. then wake up do your team and go back to sleep exactly anyway moving we've on with peace we've said with peace set your alarms set your alarms god damn it don't care where you are so what we're going to talk about this week because this is the last week before we break for the world cup um so we're probably we this is probably our penultimate episode we might do one more after game week 16. Um, just to kind of review things and, and talk about how things have gone for the first part of the season. That will be super positive um, from my end anyway. What what we want to try and talk about this week is the fact that we've almost got a bit of a, a punt like this week. It's almost like game week 38 where whoever, whoever you bring in or whoever you transfer in, it's just for one week because after this week, everyone's going to get the chance to have unlimited transfers. You can change your team as much as you like the prices are all freeze as well. We've had that confirmed today where the price changes won't matter. So if you were desperate, you could just forget about fantasy football, 
put your phone away until Christmas time when the football's coming back. See who's injured, see who's come back to train and after the World Cup, set up your team and then off you go again. Um, so it's it's quite it's quite a handy little thing. I'm glad it's worked that way. Um, the next time we will probably be looking at the fantasy football app is just before the 11 p.m. Boxing Day deadline, uh, which is kind of nice. Do you think you're going to be somebody, Dan, who is drunk on Christmas doing your team or hung over on Boxing Day doing your team? Uh, or before? Well, to be fair, I actually tend not to drink on Christmas. I know I might be one of the only people in the world, but uh, I tend not to drink on Christmas. I usually get slaughtered on Boxing Day. So... Um, I usually have a sober Christmas day. So I'll probably just get up as normal before we all, like, we all as a family. We used to go to my grandma's and she got into a bungalow and now we all don't fit. Uh, so we're, like, rent, like, a like, like a community centre on the corner. So we all go in there. So I'll probably just relax as normal. And before heading off to my grandma's, I'll just casually do my team. I'll probably... Maybe like a couple of days leading up to it, do like a bus team draft for the wild card, and then do some tinkering maybe on Boxing Day, but maybe even on Christmas Day. But it won't be it won't be drunk tinkering. No, I think you? I'll have a rough idea. I think um, it might be a case like it will like over like after Christmas dinner and that we'll sit and I like have a chat with like family because I know like a couple of people that that play the game. So it'll be a little bit of a conversation, but other than that, I'll probably leave leave the app alone for a bit for my own sanity. Um, because I, I yeah, I feel like I need the break from it, to be fair. Yeah. Um but yeah, I, I don't want to just try and leave it alone. But this week we can transfer in like a big punty guess, someone who you want to try and just have in your team for one week potentially, who you think's gonna score a fair, a fair few points. So we've both got a defender reach, a midfielder reach, and a striker reach. Yep. Would you like to go first with your defender? Sure. So I've went for Zinchenko. Oh. Because he's different to Saliba and, and Gabi, who I think a lot of people have, maybe. But we saw how effective he was at the beginning of the season. I think he provides an option if you want to weigh in without having either of those two. But he's also, if you do have one of them and want to double up, perfect as well. Like I say, you can get high pitch, he sort of underlaps quite a lot. But most importantly, it's the fixture. Wolves away. Yeah. That, uh, uh, nailed, nailed on clean sheet, isn't it? Really? Well, Your I mean, if I can't bring him in, then I hope I hope we are jinxing it. I hope there's juju here. Oh, yes. We're all about the bad juju. But yeah, I mean, Arsenal... <laughs> Arsenal are amazing, aren't they? Like they, they yeah. are class this year. Um, it's gonna be a, it's gonna be a tough run. I think it's probably gonna end up on literally just a head to head league position on whether it's gonna be him or Eddie Howe to get manager the the season. The both been absolutely outstanding, punching well above the way Arsenal have as well. Like when you look at their team, you think that's a very good team, but yeah, not as. It's not as good as what they're doing. It's not as good as what they're performing. So I think he deserves a lot of credit for that. I think um, all eyes will be on them at the end of the season to see whether they can kind of keep keep it together mentally. And I think, yeah. I mean, after after the while after the um, the World Cup, we will obviously do an episode about like the, the, our our squads going into game week seventeen. But you can't imagine not having three Arsenal players in there. Absolutely correct. Um, so obviously having one in already or a couple, or three already, is kind of doing yourself a bit of a favour. Yeah. One thing I will say in that, in response to that, so if you're in a position where you're like at the top of a mini league or you're, you're at the top of the overall rankings, if it's a tie at the end of the uh, at the end of the year, one of the tiebreakers is how many transfers you've made. So over, the, over the, this World Cup break, if you're constantly making transfers, that's going to potentially like bite you on the arse at the end um very unlikely but it's just one of those things to be a bit conscious of like don't constantly just keep processing transfers um so yeah arsenal defense zinchenko in particular i like it yeah, I, I do like it bit of a differential isn't it yeah definitely um mine 
is uh, Ivan Perisic. So the reason that I'm interested in Perisic is he was in the absence of Son, he was playing up front with Harry Kane, um, which was mental. So you've got a defender in FPL playing as a striker. He, on the Sofa Score app, he's actually placed alongside Harry Kane. And when you look at, there's a feature at the top on the lineups on the app where you can see their average position on the pitch. And Perisic is number 14. I'll, I'll, I'll put a screenshot alongside uh, so Scott can put it across. It's um, Perisic is like further ahead than Kane. He's more advanced. Um, so he's playing as the striker, which is unbelievable. So against Leeds at home, there's a chance that Perisic keeps a clean sheet and is in fantastic positions to score goals or assist, um, which just to me sounds like a beautiful combination. Yeah, against Leeds, I think that's obviously could be a good fixture, but Leeds are scoring a lot and he's still a defender. Yeah. And it's not that... like Spurs are amazing at the minute either, are they? Exactly. But, but it's a I punt. Think, I think of all the defensive options from Spurs, he's miles by miles going to be the best one. Yeah, 100%. Absolutely. And I mean, can you ever think of a, a defender in FPL who played striker? Has that ever happened? I know Lundstrom was a it's striker, like in terms of just in terms of the fantasy Premier League game. Yeah, yeah. So like, so out of position. Um, so like classified incorrectly. Because I know I had Lundstrom a few years ago, who was labelled as a defender, but was playing centre mid. Oh, I'm sure there's been one, and I can't think of who it is. And we also had Dallas, didn't we? The same sort of se- the, the same season. You get like them that are not quite right. Yeah, but nothing, nothing like this. No. So while while Son's out, if he's constantly going to be playing there, you can't you can't not have him in my eyes. I think he's going to be my transfer in this week. Um, but yeah, have you got a midfielder? I think if we're rating picks, I think yours is probably better than mine. I think mine's more of a steady Eddie. Probably gets a clean sheet. Maybe doesn't get any attacking returns. Yours is a, a much bigger risk, a much yeah. bigger. Risk. But I think the reward could be. Phenomenal. Fingers crossed. Who's your midfielder? I will have one with a similar vein. I went Kulazewski. He was on my mind, in fairness. Uh, come off the bench against Liverpool, didn't he? Set up a set up a goal straight away. Yeah. Absolutely fantastic, that kid. He is so, so good at football. Um, and I think with with the injuries that Spurs have, he's he's nailed to play. He has to be nailed to play in this game. Just yeah. has to. Be. He's no crucial in the week, so obviously there's going to be some cup games here and there, for some teams and whatever else. But I just I can see him start and playing, and I think he can do a lot of damage to Leeds. And I've still got Son, so I need a midfielder, and I don't really feel like taking a hit for one week. No. So. You know, players like Ford and are just going to have to stay in. So it's son to someone else. I think, especially with how much value I've got now, it could. If I've got the money, I'm not too sure if I have. I could go Salah. I mean, I might, I might take a minus four just to be able to get Salah in against Southampton. How badly they defended against us. So that could be a thing, but um, at the minute, just for like, for like, because I'm guessing. My, Recommending Salah is just a cop out, obviously. We, yeah, we can't do that. Yeah. Don't get him against Southampton at all. Uh, yeah, I'm going for Kulazewski. Cool. That's awesome. I, I like, I think I saw that in eight, he's eight games that he's featured, he's got like a return in four of them. I have like 50, 50% success rate is, yeah, is decent. Um, so, yeah, if you need a midfielder, could I not tempt you with um, Harvey Barnes? You could tempt us with Harvey, Harvey Barnes, but so I still prefer Telemans or Madison. So Harvey Barnes has just quietly been going about his business in his last three games. Sorry, no, four games. He's got three eight-pointers. Uh, so three goals in his last four. Um, two of them have come uh, in away fixtures, and Leicester are away uh, to West Ham. West Ham are in the middle of a bit of a crisis, I reckon. Like yeah. David Moyes looks on the brink. Um, a lot of like infighting between West Ham fans. 
about whether he should like should be sacked or whether he's, he shouldn't. Because in fairness, he's done a tremendous job for them. He's done a fantastic um, job. Fantastic. And in, in the same way, in the same way that Leeds fans were quite divided over Bielsa, I think West Ham fans have that same sort of thought of David Moyes. And I think all of that, it's a, it's a home fixture for West Ham. There's going to be, I reckon, a, a weird atmosphere in that stadium because all there is already. It's like a weird stadium anyway. It's a horrible stadium. It's my least favourite, yeah. I think, with how far away everyone is from the pitch. Yeah, and it's... I think Leicester, I think Leicester as well, though. They're they other than getting beat by Man City, um, ever since they they lost after going ahead against Bournemouth, they've not been beaten apart from Man City. They've like kept dozens of clean sheets, not dozens. That was an overreaction. They've kept dozens, uh, and dozens, thousands of clean sheets, <laughs> millions and millions <laughs> of clean sheets. No, so um, honestly, Danny Ward's a good option. Um, I, I'm starting him over Pope this week. Um, I know sacrilege. I'm already on Trippier though. I'm starting Trippier. Um, so yeah, I just think Leicester are a good a good bet to beat West Ham at the Olympic Stadium. Um, and Harvey Barnes, I think he's he's getting the goals. He could be a good a good little um, punt for for this for this week. Nice. Thumbs up or thumbs down? Thumbs up. Cool. That means it's going to go badly. What's your striker um, choice, Dan? Well, my gut instinct is to say Firmino or Nunes. That's my gut yeah. instinct. At home to Southampton, if you can't get Salah in, I think one of those two. I don't know if they can possibly cover Salah, but they're going to be your best bet. But um, I've followed your lead a little bit here. And it, it, this one's a risk. This one is a risk for that fateful term, X-Mins. But if, if you fancy the punt, Jamie Vardy. Ooh. Ooh. All the reasons you said about Harvey Barnes, I know that Jamie Vardy's not quite in as great a form, but when you see Madison score, it's often like assisted by Vardy. And West Ham are dreadful. And can you imagine him against Craig Dawson? Like just uh, has he got has he got the legs anymore though? Yeah, just about. He has for this game because I'm I'm recommending him and he's watching. And he's like, oh, you know what? He's like Dan Baxes, so I'm gonna do it. Oh, the, the the career that that guy's had, right? I would absolutely love him after the World Cup to just like have another have another absolute like stormer like and find some form. But I kind of worry that his career is starting to slowly it's but surely coming... peter out. But this is a one one game punt. I would absolutely never in a million years recommend Jamie Vardy if there was even another fixture after this one. But I can see if, if Leicester have, do Leicester have a cup game before the next league game? Yes. Yeah, see, so there's 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 cup games this midweek. I think that's going to tell us a lot because I can see Ian Acho and Pat and Dagger starting that. And if they do. Hey. I think that opens the door of Jamie Vardy playing at the weekend. If Jamie Vardy plays in that midweek game, then yeah, just ignore everything I've said. I'd still say like the Liverpool lads are better choices, but for budget and also just we said them we said them both last week, and I think Firmino did nothing and Nunes got an assist. Just like oh great, if you brought him in, you'd still be happy with the, with an assist. I think for Nunes, yeah, uh, and then you want them for this week, but I just want to say something different. Who's your forward? No, no. My forward is uh, Dom Solanke. So, again, obvious mentions are the Liverpool lads. Um, Wilson, if he starts, if he's cured from his, his illness. Um, but Solanke, I'm just looking. Uh, they've got Everton at home. Um, Everton, just some stats on Everton because they're quite poor. They've got the second highest expected goals conceded in the last six. And they've conceded the second highest volume of shots in the box. So they're just like conceding chances and, and shots left, right and centre. Um, and they've got um, Dominic Solanke has three holes in his last six and they were all against like your lower level teams, like poor defences. So that was Leeds, Fulham and Leicester. So if we consider Everton in that same sort of category, I think Solanke is going to get a, a few few chances to, to score. 
Bournemouth aren't shy a goal either. They're, they're, they're oh. quite attacking at the minute, especially at home. Before the World Cup, I think they're going to want to get a win on, on the board um, and put a bit of pressure on Frank, I think. Yeah, I um, I currently have Connor Cody at the back. He's done all right for us, you know what? I cannot complain. He obviously didn't do great for us this week, but he was never meant to play this week. He's off the bench because of reasons we've previously discussed, Matt. But generally, he's done well for me. But I think he could be due a benching for this one. Yeah, I agree. Well, they are our punts. Decide on one of them at your own peril. Because if you're watching this, you're probably well aware of our struggles this year. Mine, mostly. If anything, um, what, but... what's probably a, a more reasonable expectation or a bit of advice is to write those six players down, leave them somewhere like ever-present when you make decisions, and proactively disregard all six of them. Yeah. Or oh, actually, do you know what? The more likely thing to happen is we will what will not take our own advice. And no all of all of them will ban. And I'll bring in someone randomly instead. Like I might bring in Salah for a hit and I'll break more Salah as well. Yes. That's the most that's the most likely scenario here. I'm, um, I'm, uh, I'm definitely bringing in triple Liverpool after the World Cup, hundred percent, because either really? my team's going to be amazing or they're going to do dog shit and either way I'll be delighted <laughs> yeah fair enough fair enough um, we have a question which we're going to throw in before we talk about our teams um, yeah. from, from Chris who's the host of the All the Smile and Faces podcast um, so he says is there such a thing as FPL player curse now he's terrified of bringing in Almiron uh, at the risk of like if he has a downward trajectory after bringing him in he will be solely to blame. Um, is that true? It, will he be solely to blame? Not solely to blame, but a solid 73% to blame. So, I totally agree. I think after, if you haven't brought him in by now, if you do, you are the person who needs to be responsible for that. Yes, um, I'm responsible for breaking Callum Wilson this week. I, I, am, yeah. I am that person. However, be grateful. Without me, Chris Wood wouldn't have banged one in. Honestly. Uh, so you welcome Chris Wood. It was all me. Nothing to do with your uh, your skill. Yeah. It was a lovely turn and finish, though, wasn't it? From Wood. All four. That were balls were absolutely great. Oh, we're playing some beautiful football. I know. Absolutely beautiful football. I, mean, I think in general we didn't play very well, but we're so clinical. And the goals themselves. I mean, what sort of realm or reality are we living in where we can go? Yeah, Newcastle didn't play very well, but we're smash Southampton away 4-1 because I remember the days we used to get beat about 6-0 down there yeah like, we, we'd never win there horrible place for Newcastle to go horrible place and I think if you just watch the game without the, without the goals you'd be like oh, it didn't look like the easiest game uh, very even I think they were statistically better than us but just world class finishing it just says it all though like the fact that we can have three players from Newcastle in our fantasy teams when historically we were buying players who were playing Newcastle and yes, totally. captaining players against Newcastle and it was it's now just such a nice feeling but it's so it's a nice feeling but I'm also terrified at the same time that by having these players I'm, I am gonna like reflect my poor look onto the team um, yeah. but it's just amazing it's such a nice time to be a Newcastle fan at the minute and that's also like reflecting in fantasy football. Like it's going to be nice when we do our post World Cup preview, when we're telling everyone who the best Newcastle players to get in because that's what people want to know, and it's they're wanting to triple up on Newcastle players. That none of us have yet touch wood broken Kieran Trippier, yeah? because that man is mean in this game, and we all own him. Not just me and you and everyone that listens to this podcast, but I mean everyone that plays the game owns him. Yeah. That doesn't you have need it. to touch some serious wood, my friend, because you've just put some juju on there. I uh, did say that as well. I did do it. What a phrase. That I was wondering when we're going to have it. I mean, you said hole earlier on in a way that sounded like you said something else. Uh, I didn't say anything. I refrained. Um, I've got a wooden table, which I'm currently grasping with both hands. So I figured that was enough. But... Um, Grasping with both I, I hands. Don't think any, I don't think any other kind of touching wood content 
would uh, would be appropriate unless I go and track down Chris Wood, touch him, and when he complains and gets a restraining order, I shout, but Matt told me to. There could be loads of Matt who are telling you to go and touch Chris Wood. Should we talk about our teams? Yeah, sure. I mean, I don't want to, but we'll do it just because it's part of the structure of the show. <laughs> so this week I took a minus four, Daniel. Um, so I came out with 44 points, so that was below average again. Shock. Um, 44 points with your minus four. Yep. So I had poor who obviously conceded that ridiculous goal, which I was upset by. Captain Cancelo, so I got minus four off him. So technically I had a minus eight. Um, Trippier got me 12, but everyone has him. Gehi got me two, which was nice of him. Uh, Zaha got me 12, so that was a small win. I was quite happy about that, but ultimately it didn't really do me any good because I'm terrible. Uh, Saka got me five. Martinelli got me three. Bowen got me two. Wilson got me one for his little 45-minute cameo. And Haaland got five, but everyone has him pretty much unless you sold him because you thought he wasn't starting. Darwin got me seven. So those, I feel like I had some nice differentials this week, which was the annoying thing. But because of the minus four and because of other players, I think, doing well, like the likes of Kane and Almiron Salah. and all these and Salah, all these highly owned players who also did well that I didn't own, I still came out like with a red arrow. Like I'm down to 4.3 million now, which and that needs to improve after the World Cup. Like I can't what, what was seriously your, sit here. What was your overall game week rank? Mate, honestly, my game week rank. So last year, I don't think I had a game week rank that was like outside 2 million. This year, I think I've had one that's been inside 500,000. And that's it. Everything else has been like dog Do shit. Don't take into account hits, do they? No. Thankfully. Right, game week rank was it was uh, 8,369,545. Well, that was yours this week. It was both of ours. <laughs> Have you got the same amount of points as me? I got 44 <laughs> points. But I oh, that's a lovely segue. Go on, tell us about it. I didn't take a hit. Uh, right, the Blankers, Guaita 2, Dunk 1, Cancelo minus 2, Cody 1. So between the four of them, I've got two points. <laughs> Less than a point per player. <laughs> <laughs> This is going to absolute shit, isn't it? Uh, in midfield, I had Phil Forden's one point, Martinelli's three, Odegaard's three. By the way, Odegaard at the end when he's chipped the keeper and put it over. I'm ill, <laughs> <laughs> man. Uh, Vice captain Callum Wilson. I didn't get a chance to change any of my captaincies or anything like that uh, because of that was another thing with the with the web site not working. I didn't get a change my captain or vice captain or anything. So Wilson was oh, my vice captain. Lucky you. At least you got points. I got. I, I lost them. I got three players that returned. Kieran Trippier's point is 12 because everyone owns him. What I mean, what is his ownership here? 63.8% uh, of the game own him. Crazy. Zaha's 12 points for you. To think we... we, we we're both going to sell him. <laughs> and to be fair, he would have been one of my transfers out if it wasn't for Son being injured. So that's just how bad I am at this game. And then Haaland remained my captain to double his five to ten. Well uh, played. Well played, sir. I'm lamenting having Gehi as my third sub because he got two points. I benched Andreas as six points, by the way. I also oh. had Ward on my bench for six points. So... It's a good job we do this, you know, because I feel like if we just had to bottle this up and like live our life without talking about this, Very that important. would probably be a serious, serious problem, I think. Um, so, should we move swiftly on and play our favourite show, What's the Point? Yes, let's do it. What's the point? Is it is it probably known as now? What? Well, yeah. What's what's the point? What's at stake right now? A whole pint of rum. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, that's not what we agreed. Honestly, mate, I was dying. I, I, I went out, I rarely drink now, but I went out and it was atrocious. So it'll be a pint of water for me by the end, I'm telling you. Keep nice for me. Horrendous. Have... Horrendous. Anyway, cue the jingle. Woo! 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 There we go. Right. 
I have done a Newcastle themed one this week. So I've got three Newcastle players. Hoping that you've you've not been paying attention. Um, I've totally ignored Almiron and Trippier because they're on like 80 odd points and like miles ahead of everyone. Um, because they're mint. So are you ready? We've got Bruno Guimaraes. 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 Burn. Wow. Okay, big Dan Burn. And Callum Wilson. That is absolutely filthy, that. How many Good goals luck. Bruno got this year? Because Dan Burn's got a lot of clean sheets. He's not got a single attack in return, I don't think. How many clean sheets have we got this season? Loads, mate. How many games have you guys even played? Buckets. Absolute but buckets. Nine clean sheets, something like that, off the top of your head? So, nine... Uh, oh, sorry, he's probably on, probably on like low 40s, maybe. I imagine if I, this is horrifically wrong. Um, Bruno played every game. Did he do... I'm trying to think. He's got a couple of assists. Will stick and Daniel. A lot of the season, but he's still got like five goals. Oh, um, but he has missed a ton of fuss. So that's about. Oh, so he's going to. Oh, I'm going to go. Bruno. Oh, God. Bruno Danburn Wilson. So Bruno first. Yeah. Then Dan Byrne second. Then Callum And then Wilson third. Incorrect, sir. Incorrect. Ah. So was it it was two two, wasn't it? Yes. So it remains. Yes, because I pulled it back last week, didn't I? So it remains two two. Do you want to hear the, the points? No. <laughs> I'm gonna tell you anyway. <laughs> so we've got uh Callum Wilson on fifty four points. Oh, so that's totally wrong. Brilliant. Then Bruno Guimaraes on 49 points. And then Big Dan Byrne on 48 points. I did do that on purpose because I knew the clean sheets would like totally scup you. It's Callum Wilson's got a lot. The problem is he has so many bonus points, doesn't he? Yeah. He's missed yeah. by the season. Yeah, exactly. So we We'll quickly do a roundup of the Gallagher Shots Mini League before we yep. go. Um, still in first place, we've got John Warren. He hasn't given up that number one spot after stealing it from Liam Woodfine. However, Liam is catching him. He got 18 more points than John this week. So he's um, John Warren is on 947 points and Liam is on 945 points. There's two nice. points in it. It must be lovely. Imagine. Imagine. Um, and as well, one thing that I noticed, I hope he's watching, um, Alex Cowan, who won last year, um, has sneaked in to the top five now. So he's fifth on 922. And he, he knows what he's doing. Um, he's class. So be interesting to see what happens going forward. So, yeah, that was an interesting, uh, that was an interesting little chat, Dan. We've got a lot off our chest. I'm trying to see how many overall points I've even got. I don't even know where to find. <laughs> I don't even want to look at it. Like, honestly, I don't even want to look. I know it's not that. I reckon I was like 700 and odd, to be fair. You've got 700 and odd points, you reckon? I reckon? I reckon I'm around the 700 mark. Maybe just peaked into the 800 mark. I've got 836. And I'm 1.3 million. Mate, I'm way down there then. Let's not let let's let let's not talk about that. Let's let's no. it's it's all gonna be okay after the World Cup. It is it's all gonna be fine. We've gotta believe that. Gotta believe that. Um so yeah, thanks for listening um or watching. Um please make sure you're subscribed. We know if you haven't, that's why I'm telling you again. Subscribe to the channel, like the video, do it. I can I can see you. And I mean I can't see you, that sounded really, really dodgy. Um it's just, it's just week after week, red flags. Yeah, sorry, everyone. <laughs> sorry, did it again. <laughs>
and then yeah feel free to comment if you like any of the uh, ideas we put forward for transfers yeah give 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 it a shout or if you think they're absolutely dreadful comment that too yeah okay and see you all next week okay see you later. bye <laughs>